in this video, I'm gonna share five key tips that you need to know to help you spare your skin, your hair, and your wallet this season. What's good, everybody? It's your main canane back at it again. Anybody here from Canada? <laughs> Anybody here thinking of moving to Canada? <laughs> well, if you're thinking of moving up there, there's something you're gonna need to know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mel, and up north here in Canada, we are full-fledged in the winter time, so we are due to continue our Cold Curls series. I am excited because I'm gonna share with you five affordable ways that you can continue to take care of your hair this winter without breaking the bank or even buying a single thing because you probably have all of these tools in your arsenal. I'm gonna share with you how to use them, how to maintain your very own mane from home. So without further ado, let's get to it, to it, to it, to it, to it, to, to it. You know how we do it. My hair's been through it, through it, through it. Roll the clip, roll the clip. The snow aesthetic for me. <laughs> See, the snow is progressive. It's progressively getting worse. My lashes, my freaking lashes. Sometimes you can just try your best and hope for the best. My, my my bangs are hanging off of your life right now. When the hair on your head is rougher than the feeling of your legs this season, we have a problem. So step number one, we are going to use a hot oil treatment for softening. This is one of the best, most luxurious things that you can do for your strands, as it will not only give them intense shine, but it will make your shampoo so much easier because you're protecting those already dry and frail ends from getting any more friction, any more dry, and therefore causing any further damage. And we are going to DIY this on top of that. That's really the only way I know how to do a hot oil treatment. I also kind of find it really fun that we get to play, you know, cosmetic chemists and make our own little hot oil concoction with your favorite oils that you do have at home. I'll share with you my go-to concoction. I start off with the base of coconut oil. An alternative you can do is olive oil. I eat too much olive oil. I use it in my food too much, so I'm gonna keep that for food. But I love this in my hair for me and my high porosity strands. All right, coconut oil's in. And that's how you know it's cold in here, okay? She is solid. She's firmer than me right now. <sighs> Resolutions will start in the new year. Okay, thank you. If you have sweet almond oil, this is super softening and nice to add as well. Jojoba oil is also excellent because it's very friendly for the skin as well. I always said, yo hoba, like yo, what's good hoba? But you know, ba, it's actually called jojoba. Jojoba oil. And tis the season for a sweet old ho ho ho. You know, like, wow. Learning things is great and fun. I also throw in some red pimento oil. This is for strong roots. And some good old Jamaican black castor oil. Only a little bit of this one because she is thick. She is syrupy. She is potent. She's also a little bit stinky. She's kind of, kind of she's, she's a little bit funky. You can absolutely throw in whatever essential oils you want if you want. Very little. You don't need a lot. But I just keep it at this. Well, not quite at this. We have to add the hot to the oil. So take some water that you boiled, add it to a bowl. That is hot, the bowl is hot. And sit your bottle inside. Now while that warms up, I'm gonna suit up. And that's more like it. Let's get these earrings off because we are not about to play. We are just gonna spray. You can fully massage this hot oil treatment into your scalp as well but listen to your scalp. If you already naturally have an oily scalp, then that's not necessary for you. If you feel so inclined, you can even brush it through your strands or just use your fingers, use a wide tooth comb. Let me tell you, doing this now as opposed to in the shower when your hair is dry after shampooing, it's going to be way easier to detangle. The reason this works so well, especially when our hair is super dry, is because our hair, which is keratin, is lipophilic, it loves oils as it is oil attracting and with the right oils like coconut oil these can penetrate pretty deep and really help to nourish your strands from the inside out while also giving that protective coating that we're looking for 
before the shower. Remember, if I didn't make it clear, this is a pre-shampoo treatment. Let me tell you, the hair on this side, pre-oil, super dry. I would never dare in a million years to try dry detangling, but I have got all this slip from this warm oil, which is beautifully helping me detangle. Hair oiling has been done for centuries, a very common practice in East Asia and Indian cultures. And the proof is in the pudding because their hair is some of the longest, healthiest, shiniest that you will see. Now, if you feel so inclined to do so, feel free to also mix up different concoctions for your scalp and your ends. Maybe you have some hair oils that you like to include in your ends that you wouldn't want to do on your scalp. You may sleep with this overnight. Just wrap it in a cap. And if you want, you can put some additional heat on that. But I honestly don't find it to be that necessary. Adding heat isn't gonna do anything magical to the oils except maybe melt them down and make them easier to apply to your hair, which we've already done. I leave this on for 10, 15 minutes, an hour before my wash, and then I go ahead with step two. In the winter time, feel free to do more co-washing. Now there are many co-wash products that are now on the market, and they originated from the idea of using conditioner to wash your hair. It's what you can probably already do with your daily conditioner. Not that you should do this daily, but let me just get that out there. This is not something you would do every shampoo. You still need to clarify. But if all the cleansers that you have are really cleansing, kind of stripping, and your hair is really dry, then strategically massaging your conditioner will help it to emulsify and give you a really nice, gentle cleanse for your hair and scalp. And if you're wondering how that works, well, that's because there's a lot of different ingredients that are in a conditioner. Conditioners, also creams, lotions, stylers, they contain ingredients called emulsifiers that when emulsified, help to bind water and oil together. They're put in a product so that the product doesn't separate and it stays a really nice, creamy consistency. But when you are using it in your hair and you're adding a lot of water, you, you might have noticed before during your detangling that a conditioner can get really almost soapy and bubbly. That's because with the right amount of water and some good massaging, you're gonna help to break down those oils and wash them away with water, which is gonna give you that gentle cleanse. Try washing your hands with your conditioner, adding lots of water, and see what I mean. See if you can get any cleansing. Because with a lot of massaging, my hands feel clean after even washing them with the conditioner. That's crazy, right? It's science! We're back to the lab. And we're back for step three without the beat. Tip number three happens to do with the styling. Now the reason why I am faceless, the man without a face, so they call me, the man without a brace. <laughs> Been there, done that, no cap. Anywho, when we are styling, which is of course a really important part in your whole hair routine, to make sure that your hair is being well kept, is by making sure that we're following through with the proper steps. This may include, but is not limited to, prepping with a leave-in conditioner for the hair. Is anybody in there? It's in my hair. Then following up with the hair styler of your choice, whether that be a curl activator, heat protectant, gel, whatever need be. Those aren't even the most important things. Back to being budget friendly. Remember that time is money. Now I personally, I mean, I'm doing this routine at night and in the winter, I want to give my hair enough ample time to be completely dry before I go outside. Otherwise, I have not properly finished the hair. Prep style, finish. It is very important to properly fully dry the hair and then finish it before you go out there. Never skip your finishing oil. Unless you're going to bed, which is what I'm going to do right now and do this uh, in the morning, to which I will share my next tip. All right, now where were we? We were back with the fresh beat and we were finishing. This is in fact the step that cannot be skipped in order to keep your hair healthy in the winter. We're taking a hair oil. Now, a hair oil is gonna be different than your raw oils that we cook with in the kitchen and that we use for pre-poo because if you look at the coconut oil and if you also look at things like shea butter, if you put those raw oils and butters in your hair in the winter, they're going to kind of solidify on your hair and they leave it feeling really gross and gunky and heavy and not ideal. So I like taking a hair oil, preferably one that's a little bit thicker, a little bit more serum-y and not a very lightweight oil because I want that coating over my hair. And no, these do not have to be expensive. I am sure by now, especially if you watch this channel, you have some sort of hair oil at this point. 
And if you don't, well then, now you should. And boom, okay, my hair is fully dry. She's serumed and she's almost ready to go. FOMO. Tip number four for keeping your curls safe and healthy in the winter is by taking that same bonnet that you wore to bed or a hair scarf and wrapping these under the hat that you choose to wear to keep your head top warm. This is not only going to keep your curls from becoming as flat under the hair, but it's also going to help reduce frizz and flyaways from the friction under your hat because this cotton warm material will not be able to absorb the moisture from your hair. It is really the hat easy. So seriously, don't feel obligated to go out and buy satin lined hats when you can make your very own at home with what you got. The best part about utilizing silky accessories is that they're going to be the most gentle on your hair. The moment I see snow, I tuck my curls into my hood to prevent them from getting snowed on and also to prevent the wind from getting to them. There are many factors that contribute to damage on your hair from the winter time and pretty much all of them have to do with the weather. Sometimes we can't really avoid it, however. So for my tip number five, my absolute top tip for refreshing in the winter. And this one is a little controversial. I like to use steam. That's right, by concentrating good old water vapor from my facial steamer, or you can use your clothing steamer, a kettle, whatever works for you. This is what I like to use in order to refresh my hair. It helps to kind of infuse my hair with moisture. Now, this is where the controversial part is. Because remember how I said our hair is lipophilic, it loves oils. Our hair strands naturally contain one to 9% of fatty lipids and it doesn't naturally contain water. Water is not really good for our hair. Moisture is not the best for our hair. Although we love it for curly hair, healthy hair is naturally hydrophobic. If you've got a healthy cuticle, it wants to lock out all moisture. It's low porosity, resistant. Hence why when you have really damaged hair, it's really not a good idea to wash it very frequently. Because especially when we soak the hair with water, we're stressing out the strands. But back to steam, steam is not quite wetting the hair. It is putting it in a humid environment. It is concentrating hydration near the hair without actually wetting the strands. And if you try it out, you will feel an instant softening when the moisture is by your hair, to which I then like to add a leave-in conditioner, maybe a refreshing spray, maybe a little extra gel, or just a serum on top to kind of lock all of that moisture in in order to refresh hair that has been exposed to the elements. It really makes a decent difference, enough to spare you another one, two, maybe even three days before washing again, where this whole process can start over. Five simple steps, five things to include in your wash day routine throughout the winter that you probably already have in your arsenal. Let's recap, shall we? Pre-poo hot oil treatments, washing with conditioner, finishing with an oil or serum, protecting your hair from the outdoors, and we like to keep it hot and fresh with a little bit of steam for refreshing. So now that you have seen these tips, you know my secrets for success in the winter as a true Canadian gal. Just six more months until the warm weather. Oh, Canada. Let me know what else you would like to see from me, your main girl Mel. Drop it in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see all these videos. And I will see you in the next one, each and every Texture Tuesday. Peace. Yeah, this look is giving Christmas. I'm cute. These are definitely softer than my legs right now. Yeah. Feel like you need to go out and buy a whole new routine for the winter team time. Sorry, I'm just trying to rhyme. At least that did. Okay, sis. It's been a long time since we did this in here. <laughs> oh, ah! To which I will share. <laughs> I have never done a look like this and I'm living for it. Especially if you're wearing drugs because, drugs? You can search me, I'm fine. Especially if you're wearing gloves. And stay warm out there. Just don't touch your hair with these. And yeah, it's definitely not Jojo Hoba. Jojo, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. It's too little too late. Too little too late, yay. I am such a Y2K baby. I'm just about done here. Thank you.
Oh, my. Good night. Oh.